Welcome everybody to another episode of the What's the Scuttlebutt podcast, the uh, YouTube version. And this week we're going to get back to our EE8 field telephones. I'm going to show you how to replace your handset wire using non, you know, non-air correct wire because, well, if you can find wire that old, new, old stock, chances are the insulation is still cracked out right now. Or you may be able to find some reproduction wire somewhere on the internet. I haven't found it yet, so I'm going to show you how to use some modern day wire as a temporary solution until you can find some air correct looking wire on the internet somewhere. And if you know where I can find some that's in stock, please comment below. But in the meantime, let's, um, let's use some modern equipment. But first, check out the new shirt. Do you like that? Look familiar? That is the new What's the Scuttlebutt Podcast K-Ration Dinner Box shirt. That is exactly like you see the print on the K-Ration Late War Boxes. We have breakfast and supper coming soon, so uh, be sure to check those out. You can get those over at WTSPWorldWar2.com or click on this link right here. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. And if you haven't done so, please like and subscribe. And while you're there at WTSPWorldWar2.com, please click on that Patreon link. Subscribe. It's a dollar a month, and it'll greatly help to uh, support what we do here at this channel. But enough of me. Let's get started. Okay, so I've been trying to think of a way to remove these red caps for the next phase of this project. And I think this is going to be the best way to do it. Instead of using a lighter, I'm going to use a soldering iron to heat those up and then remove the cap. So I'm going to do a handful of these. I need at least, oh, I don't know six for today I guess we can always do more later the neighbors are probably concerned about the smell of burning plastic coming out of my office that's all right we can deal with that I deal with the smell of their food being microwaved which stinks up the entire building so they can deal with this because I was talking to a friend of the show named Jeremy Petrella and he does a signal core impression and I was explaining to him that I need some new phone lines and I asked him if he has a vendor he said he can send me some information but he also told me of a way to replace them with something that I have more than enough of here around the computer shop which we will get to here momentarily but in order to do what I want to do appropriately I need to make up some new ends. So now we have they're not error correct, but for what we're using for, because once again, I'm not recreating a EE8 phone to set up at a museum. I'm using one to use to demonstrate a living history events and even schools. So that's that. Okay, so the next step in this process is going to be to take out the old wire. flathead screwdriver okay so now we have our flathead screwdriver loosen this one up oh, oh boy I was not anticipating that um, I need a number three If you don't know the difference between a number one, a number two, and a number three screwdriver, you should probably learn. It'll make your life a lot easier. See, this is a number three. Okay, loosen up that one. Nope, did not. Yeah, there it goes. I'm gonna put some three one oil in here. Try to loosen these other ones up so I don't strip them out. Oh, got a phone call coming in. One moment. And it wouldn't be our channel if we did get incessant phone calls all day. So that three and one oil definitely did the trick. It's gotten her well enough to break that garbage up. So I need to take this one out. Take this one out. Oh, look at that. There's one hidden down the bottom I didn't see. Actually, no, I do not. Do not need to loosen this one up. It's a red herring. 
that screw is fine where it is at. So I'm going to retighten it down, but not so snug. There's actually one way down here. That's why I need to loosen. I guess I'm going to take this terminal all the way out so that I can get to this bottom screw without causing any damage to that guy. Take him out. Take him out. And some of that glue, that oil get down there. Go ahead and pull this guy off of his terminal. So he's off. Here's why I'm replacing it. Look how dry and cracked up that wire is. Clearly you're not going to make any phone calls of that. Pull this white one out. Okay, so we got a red, a white, our black. There's a braid in here too. I don't know where that's going. Feed the wire through a little bit. See what we have going on here. Okay. Pull this white one off of its terminal. I still see. Sorry. My camera's in a weird place and I'm trying to do this and actually have it fixed to my shop light tripod so that I can try to give you guys a good view of what it is I am doing. Okay. So it looks like this braided wire is like a uh, relief strain keep the wire from pulling out so i got to loosen up this one now get that one out and as i always do drop a screw on this carpet that makes it really hard to find screws but i found my screw okay so here's what we have and this right here is why I'm making these. Now they're not exactly, but they're good enough for what we're trying to do. Now, there's another strain relief in here, right here, that's preventing me from pulling this out. So I am simply going to cut it. Well, then I knew that was going to happen. Broke my crappy scissors. Because I don't have any wire cutters up here. They're down on my truck. And I am too lazy to walk that far. Wire cutters. I may have to walk that far after all. Okay. So i got to go walk down to my truck to get some real wire cutters. I'll be right back. And I am back. We got some real diagonal cutters here. Cut this off right there. Pull this guy out. So now we have our handset. And just so that nothing gets misplaced and or knocked around, I'm gonna simply put this guy back in here where he belongs to be removed at a later date and time. help I get back on camera so I'm just gonna put these guys back in here temporarily so that when I go back to work and they're where they're supposed to be and I know where they go so we put this guy back in and this guy I'll set them aside I've been trying to come up with a solution for these retaining clips and I got one. It seems to be working pretty well, but we will get to that later. I also want to remove this guy. Um, so I'm going to cut the wire there so that I can keep him and try to reapply him to my new wire. Okay, so now we have our original foam cord right here. I'll throw that aside. Now we have your basic universal computer power supply cable. Cut that off. Cut that off. Throw those away. Now the only real difference between this wire and the original is 
the original wire had a red, a white, and a black in it. And this one has a green, a white, and a black. And so here we have our wires. Next step is to strip and crimp these. So there it is, our white one. Gotta do that good twist, maybe a little fold. Take our actually you know what? It's gonna work fine without the fold. Let's give this a good twist and a trim. Crimp him on like so. Good tug. Rinse and repeat. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do, because after you melt that plastic off there, you're essentially changing the diameter of the um, crimping area. And so, even if you're using the right size crimper, you may not get the crimp you want. And so, you really want to uh, put a little extra squeeze in there. Give it a nice tug just to make sure you have a good solid crimp. So now, let's feed these guys in here. Kind of like Johnny Cash, one piece at a time. And so now we have our wires ran through. And as you can see, my green popped off because that's kind of what we were talking about. So I think what I'm going to try to do is to maybe put a folded crimp on there to see if that helps. And so here we go. I really don't like the fact that that line's green instead of red. I really, I might go to Lowe's or something and find a red one. I need to create a wire restraint to keep that from getting pulled out. But there you go. There is our reconditioned EE8 telephone. Next on the project is going to be to do something with this beat up, horribly dry case because this thing is so dry that the flap doesn't even reach and bend over to snap right there. And the purpose of this flap is so that you can put your hand on here when winding up the generator and not shock yourself. And it's also starting to tear right there. But I have I have a um, theory for how I'm going to redo that. Someone suggested to replace the strap, just use the sling off an M1 car beam. And it would work just as well, so I may just end up cutting that off and using an M1 carbine sling. So we'll see, we haven't gotten to that point yet. But uh, that is one way, a cheap way, of reconditioning the phone line on your EE8 telephone for use in reenacting. Once again, if you're going to do this for a museum, at least find one with the right color <laughs> wires on it. That green's driving me nuts, but we'll deal with that at a different date and a different time. 
So thank you guys so much for joining us for another video. If this helped you, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, and we will see you next time. This has been a Digital 410 production. <laughs>